Hey guys, welcome back. This is the last part of the three-part video. I will be talking today about the training centers, the food, nutrition, academics, what you're going to see on badge day and graduation. So sit back, relax, enjoy it, and I hope I deliver a pearl or two on your journey to success at the LAPD. Alright, enough of that, let's get down to the details. Now, there are three main training centers you're going to go through in the LAPD Academy. They're going to use the uh, Amazon Training Center, Davis, and the one at Elysian Park. Now, some recruits think that they're going to be assigned to one of those three training centers, but that's actually not true. You'll be using all three. Your main training center is going to be in Amerson Recruit Training Center. This is better known as ARTC. Now, most of your studies, your academics, is going to take place right here including your baton, your physical training, and your martial art classes. As for the Davis Training Center, this is located in Granada Hills. This is where you're going to be practicing your marksmanship. In this facility, you will also learn on how to drive your squad car and perform other tactical exercises, including search and seizures. Now, this is a really cool place and has some of the best instructors in the country. This is where you're going to be shooting at targets, and this is where you will also be shot with a taser. The Police Academy Training Center in Elysian Park by the Dodger Stadium is where your CAPS training will take place. And now this is going to be where all the ceremonial things will be taking place, like your badge day, the black line, and of course graduation. Alright, it's the first day of training. So, you're nervous, everyone is. So remember, you're not alone. Everybody can't wait for this day to be over. You're going to be training from Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. So does that mean you arrive there at 6 o'clock in the morning? No, that would be a great mistake. You must be there an hour or two before everything starts. You're going to need to get your gear ready, your uniform ready, and there are also uh, remedial classes at 5 a.m. So if you feel that you're lacking in some areas or you need more training with handcuffing or arresting someone, then th that's what those classes are there for. On top of the gear you'll be bringing on day one, you'll also have to bring a manila envelope just like this. Now on it, you're going to write your name, your class ID, and the name of your drill instructor. They'll give you instructions on how to do this, so follow them carefully. Now in it is a piece of paper that you'll write down your name, your class, your current address, of residence, your emergency contacts, and of course, your vehicle information, such as your plate number, the color of your car, the brand, and the model. So of the eight hours that you will be on training, you get 30 minutes that's dedicated just for your lunch break. This is what we call a code seven. Now does this mean that you're gonna have 30 minutes to just sit down and eat? No you'll be lucky to have 10 minutes just for eating. Why? Well, because sometimes you need to study before your next big test, uh, you just came back from a hard run, so you need to take a shower, or you need to prep your gear for the next PT class. You also need to work on your uniform, make sure you cut the, string, the strings so you don't get in trouble, or you have to get out the lint roller so you look presentable. And also, uh, please bring food that's fast and easy. Think fast, uh, don't think microwaving because um, well, they only have a few microwaves there and everybody's going to be fighting for it. Cut up fruits, egg rolls, peanut butter and jelly rolls, grilled chicken strips, hard boiled eggs, cut up veggies, cut up carrots, trail mix, nuts, cucumbers, tuna sliders, etc. So sports drinks, they're optional, but no Red Bull. Gatorade is fine uh, due to its high sugar content. It is recommended that you dilute it with uh, half a cup of water. Also, um, if you're going to bring sports drinks, don't put it in your uniform water bottles that you got as a class. They want to make sure that you're only using water in those. So make sure you bring a separate uh, can for that. For your information, a pinch of salt in a liter of water plus some flavoring like uh, lemonade powder is good for electrolyte drinks. 
For carbs, they recommend whole grains like brown rice, 100% whole grain pasta, or 100% whole grain bread. Now, no junk food, no soda. If they see you eating stuff like this, then, well, let's just say that they're going to make sure you're going to burn those unhealthy calories away. Now, also, um, well-fed officers do well, so don't skip breakfast. But don't overeat breakfast because you're going to feel so sluggish all day. Now, make sure you get enough sleep, about 7 to 8 hours every night. Would you give your energy to survive the day and keep you alert? Now let's talk about academics. There's a million things you need to know and learn, and I'm not exaggerating. This right here is your field officer's notebook. You're going to get this when you go in the academy. Make sure you dot down all the important notes that you have, um, any important information, and you're going to keep this in your back left pocket, and it would be, uh, if you put the necessary information there, you can easily refer to it. Um, after you, you get questioned or one of your recruit officers asks you something. If you want to get ahead in class, try to know, learn, and get familiar and memorize the following as soon as possible. LAPD ranks and insignias, police phonetics, and I'm not talking about the military phonetics, which is Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. I'm talking about the police phonetics, which is Adam, Boy, Charles, David, Edward. You also need to know the LAPD's mission statement verbatim, you have to know the LAPD's core values, like, for example, uh, respect for the people, reverence for the law, integrity, and all we say and do. Um, you just have to know the titles. You don't have to know the paragraphs that they fall under. Just have a general idea of what they mean and know their titles. And, of course, you're going to need to memorize the LAPD code of ethics verbatim. You will be tested on that in the academy. Depending on your drill instructor, you may have around a month or two to memorize it. Some drill instructors will give you the whole six months to memorize it. It's about four paragraphs and it's in the back of a field officer's notebook. Also, here are 10 tips to help you survive the academy. Now badge day. Badge day will take place about a month before graduation. Now this is a very special day for you and your family. First and foremost, you will be recognized as officers of the law because you will take an oath this day and this is also the very first time your family will get to see you wearing your type A or class A uniforms. These are the uniforms you will be taking out on the street. Now your family is going to be very proud of you and guys this is um, this is unfortunately not the day you want to bring your uncles, your aunties, your neighbors, your best friend. This is not the graduation day okay and the seats are limited. Your parents, your spouses, your loved ones Decide which one you want of them to pin the badge on your uniform for the very first time. This is going to be a moment of true pride and joy, so enjoy this day. The ceremony is going to take about three hours, after which the LAPD Academy's tradition is to take your family out to lunch and you have to pay for it. And don't be, don't be too stingy with your money. Have fun. Um, I wouldn't recommend skipping out on the tradition. Some people say it's bad luck. Congratulations, you made it. All that hard work, pain, suffering, sore muscles, headaches and bruises, sweat, and oh yeah, those electric shots you got when you got tased, and of course your bloody scalp after shaving your entire head for the past 24 weeks, all boils down to this one day. This is the true moment of achievement. You passed one of the most difficult police training courses in the world. Be proud and enjoy it. You deserve it. Please tell your family that they don't allow party strings or confetti, noisemakers, bullhorns, or anything like the sort in graduation day. Otherwise, you're going to be picking up all that confetti. Now that you're done with selfies and photos and partying, let's talk about what you have to do right after graduation. Now, 10 things you want to do after graduation. First, celebrate. Have fun with your family. For the next two years, you'll be missing out on a lot of family events and holidays. Why? Because you're the new guy. You're the boot in the station. Number two. Now, if you haven't visited your police station, you haven't, you haven't uh, scheduled an appointment, I recommend you do so now. You want to see the police station that you're going to be working in for the next couple months. Introduce yourself. Try to get to know the people there, especially your TO, your training officer. Your training officer is probably going to be really hard on you, and you're going to be dealing with them for the next two months. But in, in reality, they, they care a lot about you. They're strict, but they're also very fair. Number three, you want to get your gear ready and bring them to the police station and start organizing your locker. Now, don't do this the first day of work. You want to do this a few days prior. 
And if you didn't get the chance, then go to work a couple hours early and do all that you need to do, okay? Number four, get a map of your territory or area of responsibility. Try to get familiar with the streets there. Now, you want to know which streets are going north and south, which streets are going east and west. You're going to have to memorize this, okay? And you have to, especially, you have to know the major streets before you actually get into your, your station because you will be tested on this a lot. So make sure you know the main roads, your avenues, your boulevards. Um, look at buildings. Try to see if you make any checkpoints. You want to see points of interest in the area. You want to know if there's any good freeways nearby, uh, any airport, if there are any schools in the area, and where your territory and the police station is situated. You have to know your terrain. Number five, continue eating healthy and staying fit. Physical training in the academy does not stop on graduation day. You have to think lifetime fitness. Number six, know your work schedule. Now, for your work schedule, you're most likely going to see it on your email, and they're going to update you every so often. So keep your eyes open for that. And your schedule will probably be married up to your TO, so you'll be working on the same days because you'll be working with each other a lot. Now, on your work days, you're going to have 12 hours a day or more. Now, don't go to work and expect that you're going to get home after it hits the, the end of watch. Like, if it hits your last hour because you're going to be doing a lot of overtime and that's probably going to be thanks to the paperwork. Number seven, talk to the other boots and listen to their suggestions and comments. Grab their numbers, text them and call them when you can. Ask them what, well, if they ever had your training officer before. You want to know if they had any good experience, any bad experience, what was their experience overall. If they have any tips for you, if uh, they can tell you what that training officer likes, doesn't like, what they expect from them, and how they might be testing them. The boots there, they have a few weeks or a couple months. Uh, on the job so they possess a boatload of information that will be extremely useful to you they're gonna be teaching you the ins and outs of that department number eight you want to buy more gear first off get another wallet get so, uh, get a slim wallet something uh, easily compact that doesn't show too much you don't want it bulging out you, the only things that you're gonna want in your police wallet is stuff like your driver's license your credit card some money your police ID things like that now you also want to get a another set of handcuffs your handcuffs can get pretty nasty quick so make sure you wash them make sure you clean them thoroughly because you're dealing with a lot of dirty people out there you also want to uh, get another pair of handcuffs because um, sometimes you're arresting multiple people and one handcuff is just not going to do the job you also want to make sure that you have a backup weapon now this is not mandatory it's optional but I strongly recommend you get a good backup weapon and it has to be checked and approved by LAPD you can't just come in to work with an AK-47 and said what this is my backup weapon now most officers um, they would purchase another 9mm pistol like the Glock a Smith & Wesson or a Beretta for their backup and something smaller compact um, the one I got was a Glock 43 and if you haven't bought a good gun cleaning kit now's the time to do so you can easily get one down by Elysian Park lap rack. Now you're also going to need a new holster with those guns. You're going to want to get either something like an inner belt or um, a leg holster, something like that. You, I wouldn't recommend just keeping your backup gun in your pocket. This is why during orientation day, they, they're going to tell your parents, your loved ones, that the best gift is money or a gift card from the lap rack store. The, well, more specifically, the lap rack gun store. Because this is where you're going to be buying all the stuff. And your police gear, unfortunately, it is not cheap. I also recommend that you, you buy a good knife. Number nine. Now, this is easier said than done. But you're going to have to try to disconnect your law enforcement job from your family life. You don't ever want to come home and bring work with you. You're going to burn out too quickly if you do that. Work is work, family is family. You gotta put a concrete wall between them. Number 10. Finally, try to enjoy your job. It's gonna be extremely stressful and sometimes it's not exactly what you expected. So try to transform and adapt as much as you can, as fast as you can. So I hope you enjoyed and picked up a few pearls from this three-part video series. 
I prayed that I shared enough to help you stay on track and see your bright future in law enforcement. Now, shout out to my buddies from 1118. Motivated, dedicated, educated. I miss you guys. Stay safe out there. And in conclusion, from the bottom of my blue heart, I wish you guys, future officers out there, good luck in your journey. Enforce the law. Always fall back on your training. And enforce it with a moral conscience as you serve and protect with one badge, one brotherhood, one blue line. Signing out.